This is Brawl Stars, a lighthearted game that recently added a cat as a playable character. Aww. And this is Dark Souls, a game with a deeply depressing lore full of boss fights that will constantly remind you how meaningless your life is. So yeah, these two games are basically the same thing. And about a month ago, I had the genius idea of turning brawlers into Dark Souls bosses. I made some drawings, honked my honkers, became racist for about two minutes, and finally published it as a video, expecting it to do about 3,000 views. Can you please make Gus and Carl if you make part two? Surely you do this again. Can you do more of these, please? Are you Tamil? Dear Z Replays, we watched your first video with great interest. However, we want to make your next video a bit more interesting. If you lose the challenge for every point that you earned, get the control. The next stop in my journey of turning every brawler into a souls boss takes us to super rare central station. And just like before, I invited Z Control, my sensei, on this grand quest to rate my designs out of 10. And if I can't get 72 points by the end of this video, then I have to do whatever is written in this end. Which I can't see because someone keeps motion tracking a black box over it. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Before we begin, shout out to Casual Fangmain and Shaggy Plays for supporting the series. Since we're on the topic of stations, let's begin with Gus. In this story, Gus's curiosity led him to discover a dangerous ancient Mexican spirit. And in spite of his efforts to get away, he met with an unfortunate end. And his ghost now roams the train station, waiting to be freed. To really sell this idea of him being a trapped soul, I'm giving him a very battered look, complete with chains shackling him down. And um, of course, we can't forget his balloon and spooky. And to quickly finish the background, I am mirroring the canvas, so whatever I draw on the left side is being copied on the right. And since the color palette here is mostly analogous, coloring this in took about as much time as it takes Twitter to start a new Brawl Stars drama. And with my first piece done, it was time for Z Control to give his verdict. I like how full the image is, and, and I want you to keep this in mind because it comes up later. It does look epic, it's a good angle, I like his whited out face. As far as the lore goes, I like that it connects to the first video. There's no hint of that in this image. So feels disconnected. As far as the image goes, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. Our next brawler was Jackie, and this was tricky because a jackhammer didn't make for a very interesting boss fight. So this actually isn't the first design I made for Jackie. In her original version, she had a massive pair of... Yeah? Yeah, it's a Supercell game. Oh, I'm not allowed to say that? Okay. Oops. Anyway, we're gonna start off with giving her this really bombastic Jojo pose, with her wielding the jackhammer like a spear. I'm also turning her hard hat into something of a helmet. Jackie discovered this cave by accident when an earthquake of some kind exposed these gems, corrupting her. I'm gonna populate the cave around her with these crystalline structures, and for her outfit, we're gonna directly pick colors from her base skin in the game. I probably could have refined it a bit more, but throughout the entire process of making this video, I was constantly tired, so this was as far as we go. I feel like the helmet covering the face is, I guess I would have leaned harder into making it look more like an armor helmet. Um, I, I will say this, I like her weapon. It looks like a weapon she could swing, you know, but you know, it's about Jackie, not the weapon. I see what you were going for, but you needed to lean harder. So I'm gonna have to give this like a five. The drop was sudden. But after failing the challenge in the last video by literally one point, I wasn't ready to give up on this one. If anyone's wondering why I'm tired, it's because it's Ramadan and it's also March. So my country looks something like the third brawler on our list is 8-Bit, and for 8-Bit, I kind of went rogue on my initial idea for some reason. I planned to have 8-Bit in a cityscape, but then ended up drawing him in this location. I'm trying to capture a video game vibe, hence the floating platforms and the health bar. And the platforms themselves are corrupted by virus 8-Bit's, uh, virus. And to add some damage to him, I blew out his left eye. However, too caught up in the drawing process, I'd completely forgotten the Dark Souls aspect of this drawing. Like you said right now, it's like, it's just 8-bit. I feel like it's a bit of detail kind of missing, like I see that he's missing an eye, but from far away, it just it's real hard to see that he's got like cracked. I do like that he's like levitating the rocks, and uh, as much as I like 8-bit, considering the theme and the challenge here, I'm gonna have to give this a 5 too. 
After two 5 out of 10s in a row, I felt it was time to take a break. I needed to clear my head, get some fresh air, relax a little, let the zen take over my mind. So I played some Brawl Stars. You mother- And within an hour, I was back with a fresh set of ideas. Hi right, boys. We are gonna kill it with this one. Brawler number four was Carl, and I had a really good idea for him. I wanted to make Carl into a real menace. So we're gonna make him real disturbing to look at. Um, in a PG-13 way, of course. To turn Carl into a terrifying souls boss, I'm gonna give him a tiny head, a long neck and a massive body. These features aren't something normal people have, so it's very off-putting to look at. Next, we're gonna give him four long arms with massive reach and gigantic pickaxes. Just this design alone should make him terrifying. But to add to the atmosphere, I'm gonna place a single electric light behind him and this darkens the whole room around him, turning him into mostly shadow, but also allows his eyes to like glow pierce in the dark. And of course, naturally, he's going to be in his minecart. I, I like this one. He feels like an actual boss. I like that you kept him Carl and see the helmet over the eyes makes sense here. These huge pickaxes, you know, they kind of has this like scythe feel. I like all the motion blur you have on the back arms there. Oh yeah, for this I'm gonna give this one a 9. I decided to combine Tick and Penny together. According to the game description, Tick follows Penny around like a pin. Daryl, their captain, had gone missing on one of his voyages and for years Tick and Penny had been guarding their old hideout hoping that he would return someday. I really want to place this camera at a threatening angle so the composition um, is gonna be looking up at them as if Penny and Tick are looking down on us. In the background we can see Daryl's old ship battered to pieces and I'm using the same lighting method from the Carl drawing to give the whole piece a haunting atmosphere. The composition itself is pretty good. The background isn't just to fill space but instead also tells part of the story. To me that's important and I think you did a good job on that. As far as Penny she looks awesome. I don't know what's going on with Tick and you don't really mention him much in the lore. How could you how could you treat my boy like some background element? <laughs> Minus three might let's go into the negatives. <laughs> the image overall is strong with the smaller oversights and the mistreatment of Tick I'm gonna have to give this a five. After my third five out of ten in a row I was faced with a daunting challenge. If I was to win, I needed to get a 10 out of 10 for all four remaining pieces. Realizing that I couldn't work while I was fasting, I decided to only do the challenge during the hours of the day when we weren't fasting. So we already know that Penny and Tick are waiting on Daryl's return, but what actually happened to him? Well, he was helping get rid of the purple gems from Star Park, but was ambushed by robots attempting to collect the gems. In the ensuing battle, he lost his whole crew and now drifts in the sea all alone in his ship. I'm gonna use a lot of somber colors here, lots of uh, blues and greens. I'm also gonna color a patch of ground around here in a solid color, and then take a screen clipping of Daryl, flip it upside down, and mask it onto the patch. And that creates this nice puddle effect on the floorboards. Now this one feels like again you're using the background to tell that story this kind of image could be worked into like a, uh, a splash image this and the same with other pieces you really got to take your time if you're ever to have a chance at defeating me for this i'm gonna give it a seven and with that i had officially lost the challenge for a second time but i still had three super rare brawlers left finishing all three brawlers is crucial to the plot trust me dynamite is the alter ego a man called michael uses to entertain the kids who come to star park being exposed to the purple gems, the line between himself and his character began to blur. I really want to channel this idea of a crazy old man. And what better way to portray that than to have him throwing dynamite at you while hanging off a pillar of rock. This was the first time I used red as the primary color in this series. Red is a very aggressive color, so it feels ideal for a brawler whose main attack consists of explosions. I gave him minor trousers and got rid of his helmet, but other than that, nothing too deep. I also made his bird into something of a phoenix or just a bird that's caught fire. Someone should really help it. And that's Dynamite. Uh, why is the helmet not over the eyes? <laughs> it's dynamic, it's good, but maybe not so much Souls Boss, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, so for this one, I'm gonna give him a seven. For Jesse's design, I'm gonna make Scrappy into this quadruped dog mech. And for any Star Wars fans watching, yes. Jesse's story is that Pam disappeared mysteriously one day, and as the years pass, Jesse finds herself more and more afflicted by the fumes of the purple gems driving her to become one with her creations. I'm definitely giving it a different look than the others in the way I'm rendering out the uh, 
the shadows and the lighting, especially with the Tesla coils. I do like this one. It is good, but it's also fast, and now I'm just like docking for going fast, which I'm, I don't want to. This is a good piece. I, I like that it reminds me of like Soviet propaganda. I want to put like Russian font over it. Being like, Star Park leads the way. I really like what you did with Sparky. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her an eight. And finally, Rico. I drew inspiration from Genshin Impact's Ruin Guards when designing Rico and gave him a backstory similar to Jesse's, where Piper had also disappeared under mysterious circumstances, causing Rico to go down a path of hunting down whoever was responsible. And as much as I tried to make it come out looking good, the Rico piece was not my best work, and Z Control echoed that sentiment. The pose feels really flat. The background is just fire, bro. It's like, where the hell is Rico? Is he on the sun? What's going on? Sorry, minus points for that. Oh um, God, it's just gonna be clips of me saying that. Rico deserves our love and respect, and this, sir, is an insult! No, uh, oh. I feel like your lore is so much better. I feel like you could have done more. With, as far as the soul's boss, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where he's even standing. I have to hit this one with like a three. But there was still one thing left to do. Easy replays. If you watched your first video with great interest, however, we want to make your next video a bit more interesting. If you lose the challenge, for every point you earned, you must give away 18 gems and drink one milliliter of water. Okay, so that's 57 milliliters of water and... One thousand twenty-six. All right. Well, join the Discord server if you want the gems. And now let's see what this water business is all about. Okay, fifty-seven milliliters. 